Okay, kiddos, you have one more chance to take this test tomorrow. However, I'm only going to give you the opportunity to take this test if you do something for me. So watch the whole video, work these problems out on scrap paper, and I will tell you what I need you to do at the end. But you have to work these out on scrap paper as we go along. You can't just watch along, okay? Okay. So, for this one, we've worked this one out many, many times, which shows the estimate of the total number of parking spaces found by rounding each number to the nearest hundred. So, your job is to round each one of these to the nearest hundred. Okay, hold on just a second. All right, so... If you do the underline in the hundreds place and circle in the, the tens place, you're going to find out that this rounds to 1,200. Oh my goodness, this pen is just awful, awful, awful. Oh well. Okay, um, let me see if there's anything else that I can do. No, stop it, stop it. Stop it, stop it, you. Okay, whatever, this is what it is. This one is gonna round to 1,900. Oh, that's just so awful. And this one is gonna round to 2,800, so 2,800. And the only thing you have to do is select the one, that, <laughs> look how awful that is, that has those three numbers in it. So it looks to me like that's gonna be this one, okay? Now, let's go on to the next one. Gary counts the number of parking spaces in the Main Street parking lot and 3rd Avenue parking lot. He then adds the number of parking spaces in the Quarry Place parking lot to get the total number of parking spaces. Which of the following equations could be used to find how many parking spaces Gary counted. In this one, you just have to make sure that you have all three of those values added together. So, in the first one, they only have two of those values, so that one's not going to be it. Um, in the second one, they have rounded only one of these numbers. They rounded the 1949 down to 1900, and you can't do that. You can't just pick and choose what you round. Um, in the third one, they only have two of the values, so that one's not right. Um, this fourth one, they have all of the values. They just kind of flip-flop some of them around, um, or they use the associative property. They use the grouping property, so that one is true. And on the very last one, it looks like they have all of the values, but they group them the, a different way again. So that's going to be the associative property. So that one is true. So for these, this one is not. This one is not because of that guy right there. This one is not. They only have two of the values. This one, they have all three values. This one, they have all three <coughs> values. Sorry, my doggie is barking to get out. Hold on just a minute. And then for the very last one, it just asks you what is the total number of parking spaces. You just have to add up those three numbers and type your in answer into the box here. Okay, let's go on to number two. Find 7,000 minus 3,290. Guys, this is, you just have to work it out, okay? So... You're going to write out 7,000 minus 3,290. So please do that on your scrap paper right now. And work that out. And what you're going to find is 0 minus 0 is 0. And then 0 minus 9 you can't do. So you're going to box this together 
you're going to borrow from it, turn this into 69, so 6 here, 9 here, oh, that's so ugly, and then that's going to give this a 10. All right, so 10 minus 9 is 1, 9 minus 2 is 7, 6 minus 3 is 3, and that is going to match up with that one right there. All right. Enter the missing digit to complete the subtraction. A lot of us missed this one because we didn't work them out and do the regrouping. So 2 minus 2 is 0. 6 minus 4 is 2. But when we get over here, we can't do 3 minus 8. So we had to regroup. That's going to turn that into a 9. That's going to turn that into a 13. So you've got 13 minus 8 is 5. 9 minus 5, you have to put that answer in right there to solve it. And then when you get finished, guys, you need to be doing the inverse to check these. That's putting this number plus this number to see if you get that number. All right, number four, find the difference. Guys, we've gone over this so many times. You, We have to practice subtraction outside of school if we're still struggling with it. So you just really, really need to work hard on this, okay? Um, you can choose to use the inverses to work these out if you want to. So if you wanted to try, you could just pick one at random. Say maybe try this one plus this one and see if you get that. And if you do, then that's the right answer. Otherwise, you're just gonna have to work these out. Something that we're gonna have to work on is our subtraction with regrouping skills. Number five, this is the one that we went over a bunch of times. So, if you have to have the same thing on both sides of an equal sign, we've got 16,347, 16,347. We have to have the same thing on this side as we do on this side. So we have to put this number here. And that's all there is to that one. A lot of us made that a lot more difficult than it had to be. They just have to match up. This number is just going to get written in that box and that will make the problem the same. All right, number six, this is just another find the difference problem. Please do the inverse to check. Please, 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 okay? For this one, you just have to write every single one of them out and check them to see if they're true. Do the inverse to see if they're true, if that's what you would rather do. But you have to check all of the ones that are true. Okay, complete the sum. There is no way to do the inverse on this one. So if I were you, I would just work this out maybe twice to see if you get the same answer both times. All right, Lily used addition problems to rewrite the equation below. Select all of the equations Lily may have written. So for right here, oops, sorry. For this one, we've got 2,090 plus 3,250 plus 1,350 equals N. We have to select all of the ones that are the same as this. This one, you have all three of the same numbers. They're just in a different order. So that's the commutative property, but that is the same thing because we can rearrange the add-ins and it doesn't change it. For this one, they just grouped in a different way. They put these two in a group together. That is the associative property, but it's the same three numbers, so we're good. This one, we've got 2,090 plus 3,250, and they just completely left out this number. So that one is not correct. This one, they've got 3,250. They've got 1,350 plus zero. So they just changed this one into a zero 
Obviously, that's not correct. That's not the same problem. This one, they used all of three of the same values and they added a zero to it. And because of the identity property, that's, that's okay. If you add zero to something, that's not gonna change the, the answer to the problem. So this one is true as well. Okay, so this one gave us a lot of problems. Let's see if we can go through this one. The pizza tower and the pie shop recorded the number of gift cards they sold over two years. So you can see that this was 2013 sales. This was 2014 sales. Which statements about the gift cards are correct? Select all that apply. Okay, there were more gift cards sold in 2013 than in 2014. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is find out how many were sold in 2013 and how many was, were sold in 2014. And the way that we can do that is by adding the number sold this year by both stores and add the number sold this year by both stores. So you're gonna add together 1,145. This is absolutely horrible to write with. I hate this pen, but you know what kiddos? I love you that much, so we do in this thing. That's a three, come on, come on three. You can do it. Oh, that's awful, 16. Okay, so we're gonna add those two numbers together and that's gonna be our 2013 number. Our 2014 number is gonna be 1,096 plus 1,900, oh my goodness, what happened, 81. I did not mean to do that. Whew, okay, that was hard. All right, so we're just gonna add all those values up. Six, and then that is gonna be four. So this is for 2013. This one is gonna be for 2014. I hear my dog barking to get back into the house, so just a minute. Okay, so there were more gift cards sold in 2013 than in 2014. That's not true. Obviously, this number is bigger than this number, so that is a NERP. Okay, in 2013, more gift cards were sold by the pizza tower than the pie shop. This one's pretty simple. You're just going to look at pizza tower and pie shop in 2013. Is it true that more gift cards were sold by the pizza tower than the pie shop? No. It looks like more pizzas were sold by the pie shop in 2013. So that is not true. Okay. In 2014, the pizza tower sold, oops, I didn't click that. The pizza tower sold fewer gift cards than the pie shop. So in 2014, the pizza tower sold fewer than the pie shop. That's true. This number is much lower than this number. So this one is actually true. The pie shop sold more gift cards in 2013, so that's this number, than in 2014. No, this number is less than this number. So that is not true. The last one says the total number of gift cards sold by the pie shop, so that's gonna be these, sorry, this number plus this number, was more than the total number of gift cards sold by the pizza tower. So this number plus this number. So if these two numbers added together wind up being more than these two wind up being, that's what it's asking. Part B, how many more gift cards were sold in 2014 
than in 2013. You just have to work that one out. So you're going to find out how many were sold in 2014. That's going to be this number plus this number. And then you're going to have to find out how many were sold in 2013. This number and this number. And then you have to find the difference between those two. Okay. Part C. Round the numbers in the table above to the nearest hundred. You have to read very carefully. If you're not rounding it to the nearest hundred, then that's not going to work. So, 1,981 rounds to 1,900. So if we're rounding to the nearest 100, we're underlining the nine and we're circling the eight. Oh, that's just terrible. The eight is gonna tell the nine to get bigger. So this would actually turn into a 20. This is not true. That would actually round to 2,000. So that one's not true. Okay, and there we go. We just now answered that one. This number does round to 2,000. 1,316, we're going to underline the 3, circle the 1. The 1 will tell the 3 to say the same. So it winds up being 1,300. So yes, this one rounds to 1,300. And then you just have to look at the rest of those guys, and you have to let me know that you know how to round those numbers. That one is not difficult at all. You just have to round to the nearest hundred on each one of those. Use the numbers rounded to the nearest hundred in part C to estimate how many more gift cards were sold in 2014 than 2013. So you're gonna round every single number, let's see, to the nearest hundred. Up here, every one of those gets rounded to the nearest hundred. And you need to tell how many more gift cards were sold in 2014 than 2013 from those rounded numbers. And I'm actually going to print off something here for you guys that's going to help you out because I feel like that's a lot of information to ask about one question, one, one chart. So tomorrow I'm going to have something there for you at your desk to help you out with that. So if this is still confusing to you, it's okay. I'm going to help you out a little bit on it. All right, part E. Use the estimate in part D to check your answer in part, if your answer in part B is reasonable. So you're just going to have to look and see which one of these is the answer, like which one matches up with what you came up with. Okay, so this is what I'm going to have you do. If you want to retake the test tomorrow, you have to try your best to spell the word Florfelnugan on a piece of paper and hand it to me secretly as you walk into the classroom. You cannot tell anyone about this. This is super secret. The password that you have to write down is Florfelnugan. Florfelnugan. If you write that down on a piece of paper and you hand it to me as you're walking in the classroom, I will let you retake the test tomorrow. Okay. I'll see you later.